Hey, a lot of people have asked me about horizontal and vertical scrolling websites and can we mix them on the same page? Yes and no, and I'm just going to show you how I would probably approach it. The normal traditional vertical scroll on a website is you scroll up and down. This is a fake website with some elemental templates in and I've just changed the images. Nothing exciting going on there, but you know how to do this, right? Up top to bottom and up and down. But what if you also want to do a horizontal scroll? Now, we've already done a video using some code from the elemental.com people on how you could apply some uh, HTML or JavaScript in code to slide left and right. Okay, left and right. That's easy. You could easily do that. But what if you want to have a mixture? Now, the solution I'm going to show you, um, you could do probably do better stuff using GSAP or motion animations or a bit of JavaScripting, even some CSS coding where it kind of goes from slide to slide. But the solution I want to use, okay, and please don't get me wrong, I'm keeping it really, really simple. So anyone out there that doesn't want to play around with any CSS or JavaScript coding, can they do this effect? And the answer is yes, you can. What we're going to do really, really simply is after, so we've got section one here, we have section two here, and then we have section three over here. Now, between two and three, we're going to add in a horizontal section. And when I show you what we're going to do, you're probably going to go, well, that was a load of rubbish. Honestly, please do not worry about it. What I'm going to do, though, is cheat a little bit. And I'm going to go to section four, which is a, uh, if I just double check this, this section has a minimum height of VH100, meaning it is full screen, which will mean it will be full screen for desktop, tablet, and mobile. VH is really good to use. I recommend that rather than fit to screen. Fit to screen is never perfectly perfect, if that makes sense. But minimum height VH100 is your safer bet. Now, I'm just going to copy this entire section because I'm going to use that as the basis for our horizontal scroll. And this will make sense in a moment. So we're going to jump out of this page. So we're now going to go to add new. Okay. And I'm just going to create a section and I'm going to call this Hori, Hori one, horizontal one, whatever you want to call them. All right. You would have choose your own naming convention. Okay. I am absolutely appalling when it comes to naming conventions. When I do these videos, and I don't often care, do I? When we create a new section, we're not going to use any pre-existing blocks. I could do. And I'm just going to drop in what I pasted before that section. So I have a minimum height of uh, VH100 already set. I have content. I have whatever. I'm just going to go over here and I'm just going to change the background image. And I'm just going to change some of the wording here. I'm not going to do loads of work, by the way. I'm just going to call it slide one. Okay. And that's kind of giving away the trick of what I'm doing here. I'm now just going to copy this okay like so hit publish. By the way, though, I'm kind of going this at a bit of a quicker speed, but you would obviously double check. How does this look in the mobile? How does it look in the tablet? You know, you would go over here and you would go down to responsive mode, double check your content and how it looks. Don't just do it and move on. Make sure you double check things. Let's go back into templates because I've made a copy of this. Don't forget. And I'm now just going to create two more slides. Okay. Slide two and slide three. You could have more than this if you want, but I'm just going with three at the moment. I mean, one thing I should mention before I quickly go to slide three is that this is elemental sections we're working in. Even though we're in a template, I've just got one section, one column, a uh, headline, text, button, image, whatever. You could have two columns, three columns, whatever you want, a map, accordion, you know, a video, anything you want. You could add products, a shop, you know, uh, the, the latest four blog posts. Uh, your featured items, uh, anything you want. This is elemental, right? So you can keep it as complicated or as simple as you want. Let your mind roam free. So you can see here in our templates, we have Hori 1, Hori 2, and Hori 3. Okay, so we've got our three slides or our three templates. So we're back to our scrolling page, and I'm just going to scroll down and go above section 3, and I'm going to hit the plus sign to add in another section. Okay, so I'm just going to go for a section. And I'm going to make this a minimum height of VH100. Why? Because my templates were also VH100. So if my other templates had been VH50 or 75, or I had said 400 pixels or anything like that, I want to make sure this section is also equal to the same size. Now, you could, oh, you could in a way get away with 
just saying, um, you know, default, and then you're just dropping your content. But I would say, try to be controlled and analytical in how you do things. So if you've said these templates are 500 pixels in height, make sure your section is 500 as well. All right, it just keeps things nice and clean. Trust me, you, you want to keep it clean. So I'm going to go in minimum height and I'm going to say VH100 there. Okay, right. Now then, we are going to drop into here. We could do this two different ways. We could drop in a testimonial carousel and then drop our templates in. We could easily do that. Or we could just use the traditional slides that we have here with Elemental. So I'm going to drop in the slides like that. Now, I'm going to go back to my section and I'm just going to say full width. I'm going to say no gap for the uh, columns because I want it to be the exact same gap as what I've set out. Uh, the column position can be in the middle. I'm not too fussed about that. Um, we go over to the, sorry, the section leaves middle. Go to the column, right? I'm going to ensure that there is, there is a margin on the column. In fact, I'll just go back to the section. Not everyone agrees with me on this, and I understand why, because you're adding an unnecessary code into the margin and padding. It's just force a habit, and I can't break out of it. You don't have to zero zero everything out. It's just the way I operate and do weird things. Right, now we're going to click on the slides. I'm going to get rid of slide two and three and just have one slide. Now, the height here is currently 400 pixels. So again, if your, section, if your template was 500 pixels and your section was 500 pixels, you would make the height of your slide 500 pixels as well. If you want to have that really clean, crisp look. So I'm going to go over here and say VH and I'm going to type in 100. And instantly we can see here now we have a crisp, like look, there's no spacing. Column, content, margins, padding, section, whatever. So consistency is important. Now let's go over to slide one. We are going to go to, we're not going to add in a background color, so I might as well just clear that, in fact. Uh, sometimes it doesn't disappear, which is always a bit weird. We're then going to go to content. I mean, there's no image to delete out either. So we're going to go to content. I'm going to get rid of slide one header. I'm also going to get rid of the button, okay, and any link, because ideally you would have done that in your template section. So if in your template, slide one was going to have a button, you would have done it there. You can use this methodology if you want, but what will then happen is your button will sit below the content sometimes. Well, it will sit below the content. So have make sure you cover that all off within your template. And because we are talking about templates, if you then realize that you missed out something on Hori 1, you just go back into it and add it, modify it. It's no different to modifying a page, in my opinion. I'm now going to pick up the short code for Hori 1, like that. And I'm going to go back over here to slide 1. And where we have the content, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to paste in that short code. Don't worry if you can't see anything, okay? Sometimes you have to refresh the page, um, update as well before the content appears, or you just got to jump into preview. But there is still one more thing we need to do. If we preview it, even though our templates, and I probably didn't mention it when I made the templates, um, they are all uh, full width, um, you know, no gap as well in the section, so it should be the full width. However, the slide over here, when you add it in, even though the VH is 100, if you go to style, it is 66%. So when you view it, you're going to have white space on the left and right, which you might want, but if you don't want that, Make sure you go over here and set this to be 100, okay? We want the full 100% width of that. Uh, we're not going to have no padding. I tend to do that. You don't, again, you don't have to do that. And I'm just going to update this. Now, what I will say, though, is that uh, we haven't done the slider options down here, with the speed and everything. I'm not going to worry about that yet. I just want to prove to you that this does work. So as we scroll down, you can see we have this like template present between section two and three. There is no slide effect on it at the moment, but it, it just integrates nicely with the website in terms of the color scheme. But you know, hey, we're not here for that. So slide one works absolutely fine. Now I'm going to add in slides two and three. And this is where it gets really, really simple. We go back to our slides. I'm just going to duplicate uh, number one, go into it, go to content. And I'm now just going to get the short code for slide two. 
and overwrite that one. And I'm now going to go to number three, get the code for that, like so. And we're just going to drop that one into content as well, like that, and just hit update. Let's go back over to the slide. And we're going to go to slide option. So I'm going to switch off autoplay to the user instant control. I'm also going to get rid of infinite loop. Infinite loop means it goes one, two, three. And when you scroll again, it goes back to one, two, three, back to one. I want it to be that one is right on the left. And if you go all the way to the right to slide three, that's it. And if you want to get back to one, you go back that way. You could say that that's a little bit cumbersome, but what it then means is your slide one is always slide one. Because it might be you have, um, you're telling a story within the slides. Maybe you're showing the journey of evolution. I don't know. Okay. So you want to kind of control that. Um, I'm going to leave it as slide and the transition speed will leave as 500. There will actually be no content animation on here. I don't want the, I don't want anything to move up and down. This is just a normal scrolling website. So let's hit update now. And now when I preview that, we have our website. We get to slide one. Um, oh, sorry. Let me just go back a step. There is something I forgot. Sorry. We're not going to have the arrows and dots. I'm going to choose to have just the dots because I need to indicate to them that you can scroll or, or there is more content. If you have the arrow, you have the left arrow, even though at slide one, you can't go any further than slide one. So we're going to leave just the dots on. Now, one of the problem with the dots, though, is that they are traditional dark color. And if you've got dark images like what I'm using, you're not going to see the dots. What we've got to do now is just change it. Now, this is um, additional to what I'm kind of the whole point of the video. But for anyone out there that has a dark background, you want to have the dots showing up. So I'm going to very quickly show you how we can change the color of the slider dots. OK, one of the thing, though, um, for the section, I am just going to go to the layout and I am going to say that the overflow is hidden. I forgot to do that. So just make sure you slide where you've where you've put it all in. Make sure the overflow is hidden there. So we're going to go to advanced. I'm going to go down to custom CSS and I'm going to drop this code in. Uh, this will be in the description of the video, so you can't miss it. This is just basically saying the radius is 25. If you set the radius to zero, it will actually be a square. So you want to have the circle. I'm going to go for a white color. The background color is also white. You do have to make them the same, OK? Um, and the opacity is one. If you want to have a transparent effect, you make opacity 0 0.5. But that should be it. So now if we update this and we go to our preview page and we scroll down now, can you now see we have the dots? There they are. I can now scroll. I mean, I can just go like that as well. You know, it's, it's up to you how you do it, with your finger or whatever. And this is going to work on the tablet and mobile as well. So what you now have is, yes, this is a slide. And it's not what you would call, um, it might not be exactly what you wanted for the horizontal scroll. But with, I mean, the only code I've added, to be honest, is for this bit down here, right? for the circle, for the, uh, the dots. Other than that, this is all just kind of textbook elemental, right? You have your page, you have a template, we've got slides, you put the template short code in. It's pretty, pretty simple. So you still have the whole vertical um, uh, effects of how you would normally operate and do a website. The only difference is this is now allowing you to go, oh, okay, so there's a bit of horizontal scrolling as well. And because these are sections, columns, whatever content you want, you can be quite imaginative with this. So you could tell a story, you could have products, you could have featured products, blog posts, whatever you want to do, gallery even. So it's a mixture. And, you know, look, you, you could repeat this. You copy it, you paste it in another section, you put some other templates into there and away you go. You could use testimonial carousel as well. Again, you stick templates codes in, um, play around with it. And uh, I think this is a really simple, easy way of doing it without getting too hung up on different types of coding if you're not comfortable with coding, especially if you're going to get a client to look after a website. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. Let people know about this because it's how I would approach it. But I don't know everything. I'm just Imran. You take care and I'll see you soon.